My guest today is Scott Rutz. Scott, how are you? Good. What do you do for a living, Scott? I am a, well, I consider myself an application developer, um, background in software engineering, but enroll at, at Microsoft. I'm a cloud solution architect um, on the app innovation team. Excellent. That's a fun job, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the reason I invited you on my show is because I heard you talking about something called Dapper. And I don't have a lot of experience with Dapper myself, and so I'm, I'm assuming the rest of the world may or may not have a lot of experience. Um, let's talk about it. what's um, what is Dapper. Yeah, it's um, kind of oriented, you know, at, at kind of solving some problems with microservices and kind of the container space. Um, it's an open source uh, community and, and, and project that that kind of provides a set of building blocks to just kind of make it easier as a developer to, to build um, microservices um, and kind of orientated around uh, containers, you know, the container ecosystem. So it, it runs, you can't run it locally, uh, probably, you know, in, in a cloud environment, you'd run it in, in Kubernetes, but okay. um, there's, there's some flexibility there around, around how you, how you run it, but it, it, it makes, uh, you know, kind of some of the, plumbing of, of, of microservices and distributed architectures, it kind of solves that and makes it a little bit easier for developers, so you can kind of focus on the business logic. Okay. Uh, we said building blocks. What, what are some examples of some of the building blocks that it provides? Right. So, you know, there's within, when you take a large application and you, you split it into pieces, right? So what you, what you used to be able to just call inline um, now gets pushed and you're, you're making kind of a network call to, to another service, right? So the, the first thing there is kind of just that that service-service communication um, and, and kind of what we call service discovery. Like, what is the address of that, um, you know, service I want to call? And then, you know, kind of associated with that, some like security of, of being able to make sure that you're, you know, leveraging MTLS and, and, and the management of all that is, is kind of hidden away from, from you. Uh, another building block is really around state management, you know, so just, you know, this, this concept of typically you're, you're going to want everything to be uh, stateless and, and uh, decoupled, but, but every once in a while there's a certain bits of, you know, information that, that, that needs to be shared across and what comes in on one thread, um, you know, goes to one server or, or pod, uh, the next thread comes in on a different server and, and in that context is, is, is useful in the application, right? So, you know, Redis is a great example of, of a service um, that helps, you know, kind of share state across uh, services, but Dapper then, you know, kind of provides a nice abstraction of that, right? So very simple, you can just say, hey, I want to, you know, put a key with a value um, that can be really accessible by uh, okay, look, all your services. I want to ask you about that because uh, it doesn't replace Redis, right? It just adds a layer of abstraction to right. the calls. Right, it's convenience. It's, yeah, exactly. So it kind of provides a nice convenience as a developer, right? So, like, you get to use a very simple API, um, and then behind the scenes, it's it's called a, a component, but there's really a configuration. Um, and that, that Dapper or that dapper provides, um, and, and so that's where you kind of set, you know, service specific variables, which one could be Redis. I know like Cosmos DB could you be used as a um, state store, right? So depending on your scenario, um, each you know, kind of implementation is gonna have different properties and you'll, you'll set those in the configuration kind of outside of the code, right? So your code is kind of not aware of, of the actual implementation. That's all kind of managed by, by the Dapper um, ecosystem. Does that mean I could change uh, a backend for for the state management, for example, without actually changing my code, just changing configuration? Is that right? Fair exactly. Speaking? Yeah, okay. it's, it's kind of nice too when you're run, kind of running uh, you know locally, um, you know, potentially with like a, you know something like like with um, PubSub, right? You might be using Rabbit a RabbitMQ container or, or Redis locally, but then out out in the cloud, you'd be using something like Service Bus, right? So. You don't have to change your code for for that, um, you, or even you know potentially running microservices out in an edge environment at a smart factory, right? Uh, different middleware might exist there, uh, but you get the same development experience as you do 
in the cloud, which is where, you know, especially me working in Azure is where more and more us, of us developers are, are getting kind of familiar doing a core of our development, but, but making it easier to, to kind of bring those skills oriented around microservices to those other environments is where I see kind of a, a nice advantage with Dapper too. Very cool. Uh, they mentioned, we've already mentioned that discovery, service discovery and security, yeah, and state yeah. management, what else? Yeah, so then there's the concept that comes a little bit from the, the serverless world, especially with Azure Functions around kind of event driven and, and bindings. And so um, it, it, it has some, you know, resource bindings and triggers that are available. So, you know, something like like when a, when a tweet occurs on Twitter, I guess before they, but you pay for the API, um, you, can, you can configure a binding that allows uh, you to, to kind of abstract the, the uh, pulling or the mechanism really of, of having to detect that a new event occurred from the actual execution of that event, right? And, and you kind of push that to the component. Oh, okay, so this is sort of like functions, but it's a broader array of triggers that you can use. I think functions, yep. uh, there's like a half yep. a dozen or so. Yeah, it brings that, you can use. and it brings it to the, the container world, right? Where, um, you know, traditionally you didn't have that, that, that capability that, the, that, you know, like within Azure, the scale controller is providing to you, right? If, if you had a, uh, you know, especially like with a event hub or something, if you had something that wanted to process those, you were responsible for, for writing the code that is, is reading off the event hub. Whereas with the, with the, with the binding with a dapper, um, you're actually kind of pushing that onto the, the, the dapper um, service to, to, to actually be responsible for managing where you are um, kind of in the event stream. And then it's just gonna invoke the method that you have configured to process those events. What else? What other services or building blocks are there included with Dapper? Yeah, another useful one, um, you know, is what we call kind of an actor framework. Uh, so it provides implementation of that, which is really kind of useful in this kind of scenario where you, have, you kind of want to have, um, you know, stateful objects, right? And a stateful object in my mind is always something, you know, kind of like a, maybe a device. Uh, where you kind of want to model that state and in an IoT scenario, you maybe have thousands, millions of them, and you have lots of telemetry coming in, and, and, and you're kind of fanning that out, processing that um, concurrently um, to kind of achieve high throughput. But to be able to kind of manage the state of the device, for you, you kind of need to have a little bit of synchronous processing of the events for that device. And so that's an example of, of you know what an actor framework can do. And so Dapper makes that real easy. So you, you know for get the benefits of being able to scale wide, but for certain at, you know, devices, um, you know, in this case, which would be kind of how you model an object, you can, you can sequentially process the telemetry for that, for that oh. device. You know, there's some, there's some, there's a common abstractions around uh, observability, just providing traces um, in a consistent format that aligns with kind of some of the open telemetry um, standards that that have become popular, and then also just other plumbing like secrets and in, in, in app configuration. Okay, uh, uh, secrets. Uh, uh, I'm just using like an Azure Key Store for my secrets. Is it is there an advantage to putting Dapper on top of that? Right. So it it it, it kind of hides the fa the concrete implementation, right? So in, in your your example, like with, with app config. Um, there's going to be an SDK that your code is, is knowledgeable of. Um, and you, you're probably using an SDK that, that, that is installed, um, you know, by your package manager. Well, with, with Dapper, you're going to have more a generic interface. Um, and you don't necessarily need to pull an SDK in because you're able to just leverage the Dapper API. Okay, that does make sense, actually, for, you mentioned earlier, the, the local versus the cloud scenario. Uh, typically, I'm not going to use a key vault locally. Right, I it could will be a, use it in the cloud. Right, in the cloud, it could be key vault. Um, locally, it could be uh, just environment variables. Right, um, or there's open source, uh, you know, key vault providers that. Um, so it gives you a lot of optionality, and again, hides that from from your code and, and, and the developer. Got it. Tell, give me a, an example. Is is Dapper for every application, or is it just for certain applications? When would I decide to think? This is an appropriate use of Dapper. That's a good question. I mean, I think you can add it in. Um, 
you know, to more traditional monolithic applications, um, certain features of that, you know, like we just talked about with, with config and, and secrets. Um, some of the other features are de you know, probably where it originated is more focused on cloud native applications and, um, and uh, you know, more the, the microservice world. Uh, you know, it, one, one key kind of attribute of, of, of really how it designs is it kind of follows this pattern of what we call a, a sidecar, right? And so with, with containers, you have kind of the primary, you know, application. Uh, then you can package up really some of these utilities along with it that are all kind of in the same process, right? And um, they're deployed together. And you can you can offload some of those cross-cutting concerns to those 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 sidecars, and that's kind of how how Dapper runs, right? So it's it's running next to your your application, and then you're communicating with it through APIs, either HTTP or gRPC, um, kind of kind of locally there. And what's nice about that is you know different you know from traditional applications where you would leverage a library, and you kind of invoking it inline. Now all of a sudden you have to build that package in with your source code. And that means that that library provider needs to have a version for your source code. But with, with, with Dapper, because it's, it's separated like that as a sidecar, um, it's, it's kind of programming language agnostic, right? So really any programming language that, that provides you a mechanism for making HTTP calls, um, you're able to leverage, leverage Dapper. Oh, very cool. So it all communicates through HTTP. Yeah, yeah. Or in high performance, you can configure that, you know, more high performance scenarios, um, you can do GRPC too. So. I see. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, you, you took one of my questions. That's one of my questions that I had. Uh, it doesn't really matter what language that I'm running my code in. Does it matter the operating system or the frameworks? Is that relevant at all to whether or not I'm going to choose Dapper? You know, that's a good question. I think it's for sure. You know, the container ecosystem is really more oriented on Linux. Um, and so I know it's it's kind of based on on Linux. I'm not sure off the top of my head if if it's supported on Windows containers yet. Um, but um, but but generally anywhere that that you can run Linux containers, you're going to be able to use Dapper. Got it. Uh, what about um, is Dapper something I can use for uh, existing application, or do I need to bake it in when I first create my applications? No, since it's it's kind of building blocks and it's it's really opt in and in all the kind of the capabilities that we talked about earlier, it's it's not like all or nothing, right? You can kind of take one of them and just use that one um, or the, or the whole suite. So you can pick and choose. It's not real invasive into your code, and so that really does allow you to to take an existing application and then just start. You know, probably one of my favorite things as a developer, deleting some code and and, and just leveraging um, the bindings that exist with Dapper. Okay, so if you've got microservices, you could include Dapper in one of those microservices and not necessarily ever include it in the other ones or gradually add it to the other ones if you wanted to. Right, right. Um, you know, another an, an, another kind of key thing there too is because the, it is API kind of driven, um, you, you could choose to just, you know, not have any reference in your services to Dapper at all, and just kind of invoke it using, um, you know, gRPC or HTTP. But there is an SDK for a number of popular languages that that you could choose to bring in. That that makes that a little bit easier for you. So you you can bring in it. You know, you have some optionality there too. As a developer, you um, what's what does that look like when I want to incorporate Dapper into my application? You're you're a .NET guy, right? Is that correct? You. Right, yeah, uh, that's my background. Like, like, well, tell me about that. Just as a .NET developer, what's what does it look like when I want to start using Dapper? Am I adding NuGet packages? Um, what am I doing? Yeah, there's that optionality there, right? Of of bringing in the SDK um, that that's going to be a convenience feature, but but now you do have you know kind of a reference to to Dapper, um, or you could be kind of agnostic and just use you know straight up um, HTTP. Uh, APIs or, or the, the gRPC. So, so really, you know, without Dapper, if you're making like a service to service call, that that would be you'd be using something like HTTP client, and you'd be kind of responsible for, um, you know, knowing the URL of, of that uh, service, and you'd be kind of invoking that um, via that URL, 
with with Dapper, you would actually change that that URL um, to localhost to to your Dapper port, and you would just specify the name of the service that you want to invoke, and then Dapper would be responsible for you know, taking that request, and, and and it would have the knowledge of where that service that that you're trying to invoke is, and then essentially route the request to that that service. Um, okay. What about getting? Oh, go ahead, please. And with the with the with the SDK, you you kind of just you're not using HTTP client; you're just using Dapper client. You know, with with a with a nice kind of API that Strong, was used strongly to typed those objects. Calls. Yeah, yeah. That, that calls HTTP under the hood. Uh, yeah. What about Dapper? Get, does to get Dapper running? Do I have to have create a container to have Dapper running as a sidecar? Or what's what's the setup for that? That's a good question. You do inst you do install it locally. Um, you know, in your kind of local dev environment, so that uh, some of the core Dapper you know services are running there, um, and and then you can um, you can configure the component files and, and everything that that kind of wires up that middleware. Um, you know, so like a component file is if, if I'm reading from that's where you'd say I want to you know process events from Event Hub. And this is the event hub I want events to um, that I want to process from, and this is the endpoint that um, you know I want Dapper to call. So you you kind of configure when you run the Dapper service, um, you'll you'll include that, and then Dapper will and then you run the Dapper process locally, and Dapper then will kind of bootstrap its container. And then be able to invoke your code locally, your your local process. So, I see. All right. Last question is: uh, If somebody's new to this, where's the best place to go to learn more? It is to go to the Dapper uh, website, which is http uh, semicolon slash slash dapper io, and it's d a p r dot i o. D a p r dot i o. You know, it's kind of funny. I, I was uh, looking at this earlier today. And Dapper, although it's actually an acronym, it's Distributed Application Runtime. Every time I see the word Dapper, it's the lo it's lowercase APR. <laughs> like it yes. doesn't want to admit that it's an acronym. <laughs> right, right. All right. Well, Scott, thank you so much. This has been yeah. really educational for me. I've, I've learned a lot today. Yeah, enjoyed it. Enjoyed talking. <laughs>